The 2020 Top 10 Fantasy MVPs are here. Last year, we had Lamar Jackson in one of our MVP picks. Find out who you want for 2020 this year and make sure you subscribe for the whole season. Foot Clan, our big listener league draft is tonight. And if you're drafting tonight or through this upcoming weekend, you need the ultimate draft kit. And guess what? It's going to help more than your fantasy team. One dollar from every UDK goes to support St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. If you've got a draft coming up, make sure you check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. We're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we, Jason? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah! Well, I've got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot and managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. If you like a show with big laughs, a lot of heart, this is the one for you. Look, it's Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, I mean, oh, that's good end, enough. End of read. Uh, watch Ted Lasso now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Woo! Yeah, that yes. was extra juice today. Welcome into the show. I've been told that there are listeners out there that try to time up my welcome in. Oh, and you got them. I thought you've just been taking in the David Blaine experience. <laughs> Mike, the fantasy hitman, Jason you, Moore. You don't know what I'm talking about? No idea. Oh, David Blaine's up in the air. Like, uh, you know, up? How they took the house up with balloons? Do you mean mentally or like physically? No, David Blaine's up in like the air. Like levitating. Right? Like right now? Like right now. Right oh, now. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, David Blaine's holding on to a, like, a whole bunch of balloons and he's flying across the world right now. That's... <laughs> Wow, wait, wait. That's so David Blaine. Yes. Wait, he's he's fl- okay. I have so many questions, Mike. One of them is <laughs> I, I, we is, could do a whole Is he holding on, on to a bar like I have pers- <laughs> That was that was the first thought I mean, is how is he holding this? No, I, I believe he's strapped in. Even okay. David Blaine has his limits. David so Lies, you're telling me Mike. right now cuz this is all breaking news. I mean, the show has changed. The, yeah. it, it was going to be an MVP show. <laughs> Lots no. of industry experts. It's yeah. going to be a great show. Scrap it, Brooks. Okay, did you know about this David Blaine thing and you didn't bring it up? I did not. It's he, called Ascension. So wait, now, he is floating across the United States. There is a chance that we're talking about all this and the podcast comes out and he could have plummeted or something. No, right. not David Blaine. That's true. If look, He probably will. He'll plummet <laughs> and then he'll hit the ground, but he'll just like turn into a bunch of feathers. Because they won't David be able Blaine. to find him and then he's in China. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, here I am. I watched him catch a bullet in his mouth. Like Which David, seemed like a bad idea as well. David Blaine is a wizard. A okay. true, he is the lo- the local wizard. Gandalf the White. Yeah. Okay. David the Blaine. <laughs> David the Blaine. What the? Okay. We're Sorry. Back. We're gonna get back on track. Uh, welcome to the show. This is the fantasy MVP episode for 2020. All three of us, we have our fantasy football MVP that we'll be revealing on the show today. We have also invited seven additional. Uh, colleagues from the fantasy football community to bring their uh, fantasy football MVP picks. I will say, shout out to JJ Zacharyson, Zacharyson, who last year, he made the Lamar Jackson call right here on the show. What I like about this show is... You got a one in 10 chance of being right here. (laughs) Sure. Is like we, we, these are, these are our friends. These are people we respect their opinions and it's most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them, of course. And it's always wild where, you know, we get we have differing opinions, but then you reach out to some of our friends and you're like, "Whoa, that's a really different opinion or different take than what I've had." So it's just it's interesting to perspectives get, to get, get those you, other perspectives. Exactly. Yeah. And do we have David Blaine's MVP pick? I believe he chose himself. Okay, I believe you're right. <laughs> uh, I want to let the listeners know where what- is he? <laughs> He's in the end zone with the ball. How'd he do it? Yeah, yeah. Well, he would be. A decent free agent pickup right now. Signed with Jacksonville. (laughs) Um, I want to let people know the in-season schedule for the show because the the NFL season is kicking off next week. Oh, yeah, baby. Breaking news. (laughs) And uh, obviously, we're five days a week throughout the season. uh, But our editor-in-chief, Kyle, thought it would be a good idea to let new listeners know what 
what to expect for the in-season schedule. Monday shows, we do a rewind of what happened in the weekend. Uh, normally, some spectacular puns are featured that oh, day. Oh, yes. Um, but all, studs and stinkers on Mondays. Tuesdays, that's the waiver show. That's also when we pick our streaming quarterbacks for the upcoming week so that you know ahead of time who to grab off of waivers. Wednesday, it kind of depends on the week. We do keep trade cut. We do snap count uh, discussions, trade talk, mailbag. Wednesday is kind of, it's it's a wild day. It's the potpourri day. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Thursday, that's starts of the week, and we begin the matchup previews for the upcoming weekend games. Friday, more matchup preview. We do in and out, and we do a new segment this year called Prop it like it's hot. Prop it like it's hot. Talking about some player props. Yeah, they, look, this is where, you, you know, we, we we always say you don't win your championship at the draft. This is where you win the championship. Your start-sit decisions, your trade decisions, your waiver wire pickups, th your roster from September 10th through the rest of the season, that's when you actually take home a championship. So stick with us. I was on, I did a uh, an AMA yesterday. Someone asked, what is the number one thing that you believe uh, gets you into the playoffs. And my answer was basically activity, especially mm -hmm. towards the very back end of the week. If you're more active, if you're listening, if you're making those uh, two or three tweaks, there is luck in fantasy football. I, I hate to say it. There's there's some luck involved. Uh, guess, guess what? This is breaking news. There is luck in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But I think activity, just be, doing one or two more things uh, than the opponents in your league, that makes a huge difference. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Buy or Sell, Browns wide receiver Jarvis Landry, 1,000 receiving yards Oof. for the 2020 season. He's done it in three of the last six seasons. He's 27 years old. And as I read all of this, I realize that Jarvis Landry is, in my mind, somehow, some way, the most boring player to draft or think about in fantasy football. And I don't, that is such, that's so disrespectful to Jarvis Landry, the yes. player, but he really, really is in my mind that way. Meanwhile, I, he's just been a top 20 I know, guy I know. every year. And by he's really good. He's, he's great. He's, he's Robert Woods light. He will be drafted later than he finishes. That's in the fantasy worst insult football. you've ever given anybody. Oh, how dare you? Just because Rob, it's it's a man that's already Di uh, undervalued, and then you just said he's a light version of a disrespected player well, like Robert so, Woods. Yeah, so Jarvis is super disrespected. The reason he's super disrespected is because we, who see that and recognize it, also disrespect him. How many times have you drafted Jarvis Landry so far? Mock drafts, real drafts this year? Zero. S several times. Oh, you have? In mock drafts. I don't have him on any of my real team, but w when I'm, uh, you know, if I start with a couple of stud running backs, if I end up getting a, a tight end and I need someone that's playing and scoring in the mid-later rounds, I, I look Jarvis's way. So to answer the question, then, zero for me as well. Uh are you buying 1,000 receiving yards? Last year, he had 1,100 yards. Yeah, so here's what's tough about this year. Like, There's there's a lot of different things. Uh, Is Robert Woods Jarvis Landry light? Because Jarvis Landry <laughs> finished ahead of Robert Woods last year. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's my case against Jarvis Landry for the 1,000 yards. So if, things are very, very different for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, you know, New coach, new offensive scheme. I do believe in the bounce back of Odell Beckham Jr. I believe he was hurt the entire year. Uh, watching him on the field, his production, he will be back. And on top of that, Jarvis Landry, is a great player, but his he's a short a shorter reception type of player. You know, ten yards a catch, eight yards. He had a season of eight point eight yards per catch, and in Cleveland. 12 yards per catch this first year, and then over 14. I think that is an outlier season for Jarvis Landry. That's, they hit on a bunch of big plays. I think the big plays will take a regress back to what he normally does. He's, he will still be an excellent player. So I think going with the 1,000 yards is actually harder to, to say if, I've, if I think he can hit it by or sell. Because if you say 1,100 yards, I'll sell that. I don't think he's going to get there. I think he will finish 
right around a thousand. I'm going to sell. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to take him just underneath the thousand yard threshold. Well, if he doesn't get to a thousand, then it it will be just underneath. We talk about well, he's you know finished there three of the last six years. Well, you know he's he's played for six years, so one of those was his rookie season. The only two years he hasn't gotten there, he was at 987 yards and 976 yards. I'm buying. He's he's a thousand yard receiver pretty much every year. So I, I will buy that he is over that threshold, but it's a, it's a good line in the sand because it's a matter of what do you believe about the offense, about Hooper, about Odell Beckham, but the reality is he's a very good wide receiver. I'm going to sell it with the Beckham resurgence, Hooper, and the passing volume going down. Also, I, I'm watching David Blaine now. <laughs> Oh, is it? Oh. He's he's in Arizona. He's in Arizona. There's a chance that David. Well, Blaine, he could be right above. He us could right come now. right through the roof. Wait, is David Blaine here, guys? guys David is Blaine David? is everywhere. Uh, um, so, but yeah, so good stuff. And I looked at my projections. Jarvis Landry, 980 yards. So that was one of those. The gut check that does actually line up with the projection. All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. You can use the code Ballers at pristineauction.com. You get a ten dollar credit. I wanted to double check mine. One thousand twenty-three. Yes. Nice. Yeah. That's, All right. That's it's going to be tight. It's going to yep. be close. All right. Uh, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Gentlemen, Joe Mixon has signed a four-year, forty-eight million dollar extension. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Woo! Now. Now is the time you can let it all out, Andy. Was it, was it starting to feel a little bit dicey when he was Joe Migraine there? Just, oh, golly, those migraines. Just not showing up to practice. Like, what is going on with Joe Mixon? I mean, you, It certainly feels like he's not practicing because they're working on a deal. You don't want to go out there, have an injury right before you sign a contract. Are you – how are you feeling? Relieved. Then? Okay. Well, I'm saying like we're overjoyed. Were you starting to get the get the terrified? Sweats? Yeah, of course right. I was. Look, our entire objective here is to help you win your fantasy league. We take more pride in that than our own leagues. Right. We want the advice we see on this show to be good. We also do not want to pivot from a my guy. We 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 are planting our flag, and then you know when two days later they end up in a walking boot, or they end up twisting an ankle, or they end up with migraines. Yeah, it's not a good feeling, but he has signed a – I mean, the the Bengals invested uh, in Joe Mixon, a four-year deal, $48 million. This is great news for a team that I think has a real opportunity to be – I think – look at last year's Cardinals. The record might not reflect the fantasy football success and opportunity on the field. Last year, the Cardinals were 5-10-1, and one, but you started to see um, – uh, you know what this offense could bring to the table. Kenyon Drake at the end of the year, Kyler Murray in his fantasy value, and um, I think that could be the Bengals season this year. Yeah, I also think this is, ironically enough, good news for Alvin Kamara. It's another running back kind of helping to set the market. This was a somewhat team friendly deal compared to Christian McCaffrey's. Uh, it was a little less than than Derrick Henry's because that's the other big news here. Yeah. Right, is the ongoing crazy up and down quick news roller coaster that has been Alvin Kamara over the last 24 hours. If you haven't followed along, it was, you know, yet we were reporting yesterday that he had been out for three unexcused absences. It was contract related migraines. But yes, exactly. Well, I did have that thought of like, you know, right before the contract got landed, Mixon was gone for a little while and now Kamara is stepping aside and, you know, maybe they land on a contract here. Then there was the Saints are open to trading Kamara. Uh, the report came, came out and lots of people backed that up and said, yeah, my sources say they are open to it. So now it's like, is, is he going to be traded? Is he gonna negotiating in public? It's very nice. That's exactly what it is. And, and the, I think the end result here is the Saints would like to sign him. There is a gap. Uh, in what Kamara wants versus what the Saints want. The Saints aren't going to bend to a Christian McCaffrey level at all, and they would rather trade him than sign him to something like that. But I do think that they get a deal done here, and he's in. But in all of that, there was another piece of news. Mm -hmm. 
kind of lost among the contract discussion. Yeah, and that is that while he wasn't out just for contract reasons, it was because he had an epidural in his spine. That's where you get him. That is. That I mean, I guess that's fair. That's that's where you get them. But that's not good news. The reason that Alvin Kamara was eight or nine in my rankings all off season had to do with the injury problems last year, concussion problems the year before, the fact that this team has invested in you know Latavius Murray, and the counterpoint to that being he's always had somebody else in the backfield, and he's always ended up in the top five or six range. But it's what you want in that top pick. It wasn't meant to be disrespectful to where he could finish. It's meant to be, what do I want in my top pick? And feeling slightly less confident in Alvin Kamara. This was this was news to me, though, this epidural. This was something that you should be paying attention to in your league if you're making a decision because everybody's doing that. I'm picking four, five, six. Do I want Derrick Henry? Do I want Clyde Edwards-Alaire? Do I want Dalvin Cook? Do I want Alvin Kamara? Does this actually concern you heading into the season? Um, the contract issue concerns me more than the epidural, but the epidural is information that can't just be thrown out. What it means is not, it means he's dealing with back pain and that normal, less aggressive methods of dealing with that had obviously been ineffective. And so he got this. It's not outlandish or, or you know, an, an uncommon thing for a player to get an injection to relieve pain. Mm -hmm. So don't overblow this. Uh, the nice thing is they work as well. So he might hit the season feeling real, real nice. But it is worth noting that his body's a little hurting right now. I honestly didn't know that was available to me. Oh, yeah. I, I got epidurals in the back. You come on down. I'll give them. I'll give them. <laughs> yeah, I want it's you. like the preventative uh, walking boot. Exactly. I want you administering that to me in my spine. That's exactly yeah. what I want. <laughs> Dr. Don't, Jason. Don't move. <laughs> Pause. You <Hold>. moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leonard Fournette cleared waivers. He is a free agent. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up one rumor because it entertains me because of Mike. Mm. Uh, NFL reporter for Fan Cited tweeted that the Chiefs have potential interest, potential interest in Leonard Fournette now that he has cleared waivers. Why can't we just have nice things? Why can't we just have these top draft picks be like, you're locked and loaded, you're healthy? Your contract is good. You've got no competition. Come on, people. Now, now, Mike was quick in the studio to dismiss this with no real concern. Yeah, for, for fantasy purposes, let's say Kansas City does, in fact, sign Leonard Fournette. I will care 0.0%. Like it, number one, it doesn't really make sense. The, the reason why Shady made sense last year is Andy Reid had coached him before. Like, they... They had a professional relationship. It's let's see if this player who was great for me before, let's see if he has anything left, which Andy Reid determined that he ultimately did not. Leonard Fournette, he who he doesn't take snaps away from Clyde Edwards Alaire. As much as uh, you know, I'm all in. I am absolutely 100 percent all in on Edwards Alaire. But you also know that when you have the number one guy for Kansas City. You aren't getting Christian McCaffrey 90% snap counts. You aren't getting that type of a workload. You're getting a guy who's on the field maybe 60% of the time, but it doesn't matter because of the value of those snaps, the values of he's going to have so many receptions, touchdown opportunity. He's a better player than Darrell Williams. He, yes. he, could, he could demand a slightly larger uh, timeshare chunk than Darrell Williams. I think you've got CEH blinders on if you think that them signing Leonard Fournette would not have an impact on the amount of carries and uh, you know opportunities I'd... that he'll receive. That's not to say he wouldn't be the lead guy or or good, but it definitely would have an impact. I mean you you wouldn't you wouldn't bring in an extra body to not give him the ball at all, and he is better than Darrell Williams. I I know we mock Leonard Fournette about his efficiency numbers, but. Keep in mind, they handed the ball to Leonard Fournette left, right, and center with Gardner Minshew, a six-round rook. Like, what was the what was the defense trying to do? Fournette will face six-man fronts in Kansas City on his opportunities as well. Yeah, Fournette if is... You're, I mean, we've had, what, uh, 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 Damian Williams. Yeah, exactly. That, you, you that I have besmirched the talent but loved the fantasy. So, I, I, I mean, here's the deal. He's not going there. I don't think they have the cap room. I don't think the fit makes sense. Uh, I will be interested to see where he lands, but he's not of himself going to be a value. He's just going to wreck someone else. Yeah, you wouldn't be interested in Fournette in that situation, or would you? 
No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm I'm interested as a dynasty owner of Fournette, praying he goes somewhere. Manager. To, a dynasty uh, manager of Fournette. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm interested, but I think that it will be more a matter of... Um, I think you would have to draft him if he was in Kansas City. You would have to draft him because the upside of him taking over in an injury or that situation would be just too great. Sure. Um, we have an update. David Blaine is over 23,000 feet in the air right okay. now. <laughs> so this is good. I'm glad we're play-by-playing -playing this on a podcast. This, this is, I'm afraid this, for him right this now. This is spectacular. He actually just dropped. He's parachuting. Oh, is he? Oh, yep. Whew, okay. You he, gotta, you gotta get a little you, quicker Al. to the parachute part. <laughs> he released at 25,000 feet. Okay. Uh, I have no frame of has reference. The, has the parachute opened per chance? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Keep us posted, Al. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury said Kenyon Drake is close to returning to practice in full. Jason, your thoughts? I think that is uh, great, but obviously I see this as – I still see this as bad news. I mean, I, it's just a matter of glass half full, glass half empty. I want him healthy. And whenever you say you're close, that means you're not healthy. Almost there. Right. But it is funny the perspective difference you have on certain players, right? Like, this is bad news. You know, when Kenyon Drake is almost ready, it's bad news. We were talking about uh, Amari Cooper is just doing individual drills. He hasn't been with the team. But it's it's been good news that A.J. Brown has been back to individual, individual drills work, yeah. where he's still not practicing with the team in full. So a matter of the pair The parachute has opened, which uh, is similar to how I felt falling with Joe Mixon in, <laughs> until the contract was the parachute <laughs> opening up. Tyrell Williams, wide receiver for the Raiders, injured reserve, torn labrum, Season is over. Mm. Pay attention to Brian Edwards at the back of your draft. I was asked yesterday outside of the big rookie, you know, Judy, Rager, um, uh, Lamb, uh, these guys, Jefferson. Should you pay attention to anybody at the back of your draft? Yep. Sound the alarm for Brian Edwards. He yeah. may have more volume than Henry Ruggs. Yeah. You, and maybe pay more attention to Henry Ruggs too. You, uh, in our family league, family league, you dropped Jalen Rager to pick up Brian Edwards. I did. I did. I want to see how that works first few weeks of the year. I'm not going to be mm -hmm. waiting. I don't want to maybe attached with a late round pick in the terms of like when they get back, when you talk about buying the injury dip, like Mike Williams. I don't want to think maybe he works with Tyrod Taylor four weeks into the season. Mm -hmm. If somebody's coming back, I want it to be Debo. I want it to be somebody I know will be good when they come back. Um, and then the athletic is reporting. We talked about it yesterday. Tyrod Taylor uh, we'll start most, if not all, of the games in 2020. This it's interesting because, like Cam Newton has been the guy I've been targeting as my late round quarterback because late round guys you want him to have the rushing upside because that is just the difference maker. That's part of Tyrod Taylor's game. He becomes he becomes more interesting now that that there is actual like a groundswell whispers from the bushes that Tyrod might be the guy for the vast majority of the season. So to me, that turns into a guy that you could draft. I don't know, know off the top of my head who the Chargers play the first couple the, the, weeks. Their first week is really tough. They play the uh, number one pick uh, from last year, the Cincinnati Bengals. So oh, it was a sarcasm. It was sarcasm. Yeah. Ty oh, Tyrod, Tyrod should be a little bit in play. When you've got a mobile quarterback that runs the ball, we've talked about this, that's the cheat code. Uh, he he will put up large fantasy let, performance. Let me just illustrate though from his career because I looked into him early this morning. You know, this is a player that's going to throw for around three thousand yards. This is a player that has never thrown. I think twenty touchdowns is his career high on a season. The majority of his like full work was you know fifteen, seventeen, twenty range. That's what you should expect through the air. He's had rushing seasons in the five hundred range. I haven't projected in the four hundred range at this stage in his career, but. You're right. I mean, when you can run the football, that could lead to rushing touchdowns at the quarterback position. He's ranked ahead of Drew Locke in my rankings. So, you know, that's not saying very much for but where that is. But Bengals week one, Kansas City week two, you probably don't want in on that. And then Carolina week three. So, I mean, do, I don't know. Could get you, off to a strong start. Yeah, you might want to look at that. Before we jump into the fantasy MVPs, Look, Foot Clan, you've heard us talk about them f uh, for years now, but just in case there are some of you who haven't been paying attention, I want to tell Maybe you about... Maybe you're not hip with the times. Yeah, you got to be a cool cat. Yeah. Check out Sleeper. This is where you need to be playing your fantasy football. 
They are a, a revolutionary company. They started, you know, it was news, and they were getting you the news faster than everybody. And they said, well, let's take this up a notch. We're going to make leagues. And that is now where we are playing. We're, Andy talked about our listener league draft. It's happening today on Sleeper. That's where the Megla Bowl yeah. is, the, the Sleeper Bowl that, we've, that we did over the weekend. They are, they're always innovating. They're always making things better, including they've just added voice chat. So look, we're doing things online right now. You're drafting online. Well, Sleeper's got you covered with a voice chat. No, just taking all the time to text each other. Look, you can actually just talk to people. So you really got to check it out. You can download it from the uh, the App Store. Uh, it, we can't recommend Sleeper enough. Check yeah. them out. Well, and I like that they're always they're they're one of the platforms looking at the game every year and making tweaks and adjustments and improving it. And we are kind of particular about that stuff. Like we weren't recommending Sleeper as a platform until last year when they had made all those strides and now they just continue to improve. All right. Also, we want to thank today's sponsor. Uh, we're talking about Navy Federal Credit Union. Did you know with the cash rewards credit card from Navy Federal Credit Union, you can earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Your rewards won't expire while your account is open and you can redeem them as soon as they are earned because we all love cash back. It's nice. I it's like nice. cash Joe, back. Joe Mixon especially. Oh. Uh, speaking of rewards, you can get a Navy Federal Auto Loan and reward yourself with a new car. Applying is easy. You can do so on their mobile app, online, or by phone. It's super fast. You get a decision in seconds, and the rates right now are as low as 1.79% APR. You can get an estimate on your monthly payments with their online auto loan calculator before as well. And Navy Federal, their, med their members are the mission. They are open to all armed forces, the DOD veterans, and their families. They are insured by the NCUA, and credit and collateral are subject to approval. Rates subject to change and are based on credit worthiness. Rate available for new vehicles. Message and data rates may apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information. You guys ready? Yeah. Who's your fantasy MVP? All right. Fantasy football MVP time. David Blaine is safe. Just want you to know, Andy. Woo! That could have that worked. I, out. I could feel I could feel the the pressure building. I could feel the worry, the concern. Look, he's safe. Yeah, it was an unexpected ride. I didn't expect to go on <laughs> uh, you know, that he was on this morning. When David Blaine's on a ride, we're all on a ride. Look, that is true. Do you remember his underwater one? Yes. That was, that was the one that freaked me out like, the most. Why, I don't... He, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Back to the MVP. What you didn't know is he is um, one of six tuplets. <laughs> so we're almost out. It's a real prestige <laughs> We're situation. almost out of, uh, David <laughs> out of David Blaine's. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we're going to listen in to some of our colleagues and their fantasy football MVP picks, picks for 2020. We'll weigh in on, on our thoughts, and then we will share our fantasy MVP picks to close out the show. Um, we're going to start with Al Smith, my friends, partnered Twitch streamer, works with ESPN, good friend of the podcast. Let's see what Smith has to say. Hey, Foot Clan. How's it going? It's Al. When the fantasy footballers approached me and asked who my fantasy MVP was going to be in 2020, it did not take me long to arrive at Jonathan Taylor, with his mid-third round ADP and extremely conservative projections right now based on the situation that he's in, with Marlon Mack being the incumbent, with Naheem Hines possibly being the passing down back. But they didn't spend the draft capital they did on Jonathan Taylor to let him sit and rot. They're going to give this kid the ball early and often, and he may get 250 touches as opposed to the 200 to 215 that most people are projecting him for. Let's take a quick look at some facts. They've got improved quarterback play going from Jacoby Brissett to Phillip Rivers this season. He is running behind arguably the best offensive line in the NFL. And they've got the sixth easiest strength of schedule via PFF. Four of those games come against the Texans and Jaguars in division project to be god awful. Give me the rookie from Wisconsin as my fantasy MVP with the upside of possibly top six or seven RB being drafted as the 20th, 22nd running back off the board. Whew, top six, top seven. That is. I don't know why he had to bring facts into the equation. <laughs> facts are really. 
I, you know, we we all know Mike likes Jonathan Taylor. He just had him as uh, what was that? The your, it was on a breakout show. Yeah, and 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 I'm a huge fan, a full believer in the talent. If he were to get 250 carries, I, I agree, he would be a top 10 running back. The question that people wonder is, will he do that? How mm -hmm. much will Marlon Mack weigh in? But when you're talking about a fantasy MVP, someone that's actually going to win a league for you, yeah, you're talking about someone who you're drafting in the 20s at running back who finishes. In the top 10 at running back. Those are people who actually win you a league. So the floor for Jonathan Taylor is probably a usable but disappointing asset. Lower than where you're drafting. Right. But not completely unusable, whereas the ceiling is, is super high. Did he sway you, Andy? Well, I've always seen the path. It's, it's just the probability factor. I will say this. Jonathan Taylor is incredibly enticing. If you are in a league where... You know, you're staring down a, a starting running back decision, and it's Jonathan Taylor, or it's I don't know, even someone like Ronald Jones. You're like, do, who do I want to put in my lineup? What's the actual ceiling yeah. for a player like that? That is enticing, and I do see the the path is there. His his point about the draft capital and him not sitting there to rot it makes sense. The offensive line is tremendous. The path is there, and it just depends on what he represents to your team and whether you can afford to not play him week one or, or or can you put him right in there mike and i'll i'll say this because this this happened to me last year look i've mentioned i'm all in on jonathan taylor but you know there's there still is risk there like last year or, or i'm sorry heading into this year we all love miles sanders he was a league winning running back he, he was incredible uh guess what miles sanders did for the whole first half of the season He's I he sucked for fantasy football. It was really, really bad. And he was a fourth round pick. So while I'm I'm still in on Jonathan Taylor, I you have to admit to yourself when you're drafting him, there there definitely is risk. But I believe, like Smith, by the end of the year, Jonathan Taylor is a league winning guy. You read my mind though, because my question to you was if I promised you Miles Sanders rookie season for Jonathan Taylor, in actuality, the exact numbers. Does he belong in the third round of fantasy drafts or not? Third round is a little bit rich, uh, but uh, so we're bringing this up to saying like Ronald Jones is a great example of make sure you're grabbing somebody like that where Jonathan Taylor, you may not be able to play him week one, even though you have to pay the higher draft capital get him to get him. Meanwhile, grab one of these later running backs, you know, will be. Uh, getting touches those first couple weeks while you can evaluate what's going on with Taylor. All right, we're going to go to the host of the NFL's Fantasy Football Podcast, good friend Marcus Grant with his MVP pick. What's up, everybody? Marcus Grant here from NFL Fantasy Live on the NFL Network, and we're talking MVPs this year. I'm going to go with Christian McCaffrey. I mean, I know it sounds like low-hanging fruit, but you know what? I'll tell you what. Low-hanging fruit tastes just as good as fruit at the top of the tree, <laughs> and you don't have to reach as high for it. I mean, we haven't seen a one-man offense in the NFL, but CMC last year was the closest we may ever get. Played 93% of the snaps, had about half of the team's total touches, a ton of the team's total yards, and about half of the team's touchdowns. I don't expect much to change for him in 2020. Maybe there's a slightly better supporting cast. I think he gets an upgraded quarterback at Teddy Bridgewater. But this is still an offense that functions primarily through Christian McCaffrey getting the football. There's a reason he's going off the board at 1.01 in pretty much every fantasy draft. And yes, even if he has a step back, even if there is some regression, there's still going to be plenty of work there for CMC. And I think he's going to double up as your fantasy MVP in 2020. Well, I mean, this low-hanging fruit, you do have to reach high for 101. <laughs> if you didn't get the first pick, you don't get to play with Chris but McCaffrey. I feel like this is this is Marcus saying we have another LT. This is Marcus saying there's a player that we do, you know, repeating at any of these positions as number one, that's a tough situation. We've talked about, okay, I'll be happy with any of the top three, you know, maybe that kind of an opinion. But CMC could be separated from the rest. Somebody is... Asked me yesterday, is he in a tier of his own? Do I believe he's in a tier of his own? Yeah, th this is Marcus saying if you get to pick your draft spot, right. it is worth sacrificing the value that you might get later to say, I'm going to take the 101 and get Christian McCaffrey, even though I get the, the latest second-round pick. And uh, I, I don't blame him. I mean, when we've picked our draft spot, it's been the 101 because of CMC. But I don't think we need to convince anybody here that uh, he good. Well, and just when you're, when you're at the 101 and you grab Christian McCaffrey – 
hold on. Like, you need to be careful with your draft. Like, the example I'm bringing up here is Jason, we did a mock draft uh, well, last week, mm -hmm. I believe, and you were the 101. You took Christian McCaffrey, and even through those first three picks, you were like, ah, seeing all these really these players that you wanted to draft, you were concerned about how your team was looking. And then by round six, you're like, wow, my team is really freaking good. Oh, yeah, and I have Christian McCaffrey on top of that. You don't really have a team with Christian McCaffrey where at the end you go, I can't win. Right. Uh, David Blaine is just taking off again. <laughs> For real? What? No, I'm just, oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> there was one balloon in his pocket, he's, and he's, he's launched himself. He's now standing on a jet fighter. He's on the moon. All right, hold on to something. Strap yourself in. Oh, yeah. Fade the noise is uh, Brad Evans he has his fantasy MVP for us. It's going to be, I think it's going to be high intensity on this one. <laughs> what up, Foot Clan? It's Brad Evans from FTNFantasy.com. And boy, do I have a tale to tell this you. He's an evil villain. Lurking deep in the chilly, dark waters of Puget Sound resides a fantasy leviathan all backers should fish for. This mythical beast wrecks defenses with hard-charging runs, steady 100-yard performances, and abundant touchdowns. Draft him, and he'll pull the competition down to Davy Jones's locker. His name is Chris Carson. Available typically in rounds three to four of fantasy drafts, the Seattle Smasher is destined for another 1,300 total yards and eight to ten touchdowns. Release the Kraken! And you are about to score a championship <laughs> trophy. Oh, Brad. Oh, Brad. We, um, we, we love you, Brad. Uh, I, what I like about this, one, I mean, he tied in. Didn't, Seattle just got the Kraken, right? They that did. Is, they did. a new hockey team. So Brad's, you know, on the up and up with the, the sports. And I like that he framed his, ah, this tale. You know, this is a, this is a radio drama. Yeah. And he made sure it sounded like he was calling in from an AM radio. Yeah, I didn't know you could call in through the radio, but he definitely <laughs> he, did. He found a way. <laughs> this was, Thank you, Brad. Yes. I no. actually love, I love the pick. Because oh, his yes. value has been there throughout the offseason. Top end Chris Carson's better than where he's being drafted, and that is going to be true through the rest of the drafts this week. Well, last year, Chris Carson is way better than where he's being drafted. I mean, last year, Chris Carson was one of those league winning high upside guys in the sleeper bowl we talked about how well we you know we missed on last year uh, juju smith schuster in the first round but part of the reason we were able to win the championship is because we got chris carson at a value mm -hmm. and now the next year he's pretty much at about the same value might be going a little higher than he did last year but certainly not where he finished and i uh, you know i like grabbing chris carson if i'm in that tier of all of those, he's he's mixed with um, the Melvin Gordons and Todd Gurley's and all these running backs who have been better but have changed teams and have a, a bunch of question marks. Chris Carson is on a great offense where he was good this past season, and he's still the guy. So a uh, lot less variables. If you're going to go running back there, he's the guy I if, like. If Chris Carson is there, I frequently start running back, running back, running back because it's too hard for me to pass on Chris Carson yeah. in the third. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you do it. You're not lying. All right, great friend of the show, analyst extraordinaire from Yahoo Fantasy, Liz Loza with her MVP pick. I know fantasy managers tremble at the idea of rostering a Patriots running back, but do not fear the multiple skill set that Damian Harris offers. Instead, embrace it. Sure, New England's third round pick from a year ago has a playing style that's more dependable than extra. But that's on brand for New England. Listen, Sony Michelle has a bad foot and was far from effective or efficient last year, averaging 3.6 true yards per carry. Lamar Miller, the other guy they just added, oh, come on, don't at me with that because he missed all of 2019 due to a torn ACL. Meanwhile, Harris has been lighting it up in camp, receiving praise as a pure rusher, a route runner, and a pass blocker. His 13th round, 13th round ADP also carries zero risk. So just go ahead and lean into all of that upside because I'm telling you, a breakout is looming. Damian Harris is you, so interesting. You know I'm in. But I, I was asked yesterday, backfields I'm avoiding, and I couldn't help but think of New England. Because I, you, she told me not to be afraid, but I can't listen. <laughs> I can't listen to that. 
I, I love the skill set. I was one of the Damian Harris truthers you were. last year. Um, and because I, I think he is a really talented running back. So it makes complete sense to me that he would win this job. The question is, what will that job be worth without Tom Brady and with Cam Newton, with a guy who has long vultured goal line touchdowns? Um, and, you know, if he and he's not going to be, even though he's got the skill set to be a, a three down back, James White is not disappearing. So for me, while the value is there, if he ends up yeah, being I like a good the pick, pick because of the value, if he ends up being a good running back this year, he could be a fantasy MVP because he costs you nothing. Yes. Yeah. And if you have yeah. the chance with your last round to get a weekly starter at running back, that's a fantasy MVP. But I, I have a hard time seeing it actually happen, even though the talent is there. All right. Yes. It's time for Adam Lefko. <laughs> No, good friend of the show. We just joined him on the uh, Bleacher Report podcast, the Left Coast Show, and he also hosts NBA on TNT Tuesdays. Let's hear Adam Lefko's fantasy MVP. Hello. This <laughs> is Adam Lefko's MVP for the fantasy footballers. Drink it in. The MVP that I am picking is not the person that's going to score the most points. My MVP is not the one that may even lead his position, but he'll be the guy that you're going to get so late in this draft that people are going to look at you and ask, how the hell did you do that? He's not a young guy. He's not a middle of the age guy. That's not a phrase. <laughs> He's one of the oldest guys in the NFL. Philip Rivers is my MVP. Never has Philip Rivers played behind an offensive line this good. He is surrounded by weapons everywhere you look, and he's playing for a coach that led one of his most successful seasons with San Diego, Frank Reich, in a year in which it's all going to come down to the communication between the quarterback and the coach and the quarterback and that offense. There's familiarity baked in. And I think we're a little bit used to seeing Philip these last few years with one of the worst offensive lines that we may be judging him harshly. Philip Rivers, get him late. Let him bake. I thought that was going to rhyme, and it didn't. It was Adam Lefko's MVP. Oh, no, Jason. Good talking to you. Oh, no, indeed. Footballers. <laughs> that was creepy. That was creepy. Thank you, Adam. Um, um I'll say this. Phillip Rivers was an early value pick in our UDK. We did eventually remove him because we didn't feel like the actual ceiling and upside was there. Rivers has the best situation he's had in a while, but can he really reach MVP levels on your team, Jason? I don't I don't know that he's on got the your best. Team. Well, certainly can't on my team. He is, you know, we, we get the question uh, every year is there somebody who's just off your board or someone that you know burned you in the past and so you won't draft him? I I usually don't have an answer for that because I I I don't. But it's it's P River. I mean he's, he will not be on my team. Um, and the reality is I don't think this is the best situation he's had because okay he's got lots of weapons. He's got T Y Hilton. He's got uh, I don't know baby hands Jack Doyle and maybe Paris Hilton is a thing. Maybe rookie uh you know Michael Pittman. Who? Paris who? Yeah, what did he say? What did I say? Did you say Paris Hilton? Oh, I hope so. Oh, my gosh. Did Paris he? Paris Campbell. <laughs> we'll have to check the tape on that one. My point uh, is Am I this. the only one who heard it? <clears throat> yeah, I didn't catch okay. that. Okay. Well, Mike heard it in his head. <laughs> that just didn't even happen. Look, maybe I was thinking it. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Here's She's Very he, relevant. But here's reference. the thing. <laughs> is that passing core actually better than Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry, Mike Williams? No. Is the offensive line better? Yeah. But he ha these are all brand new weapons for him. Frank also, Reich is a lot better for him. Yes, Frank Reich is better. But Frank Reich also knows that the strength of this team with that offensive line is running the ball. And they're going to be able to do that you with Jonathan Taylor. You don't have to talk us out of Phillip Rivers. I'm not talking you out. I'm talking the Foot Clan out. Look, I will make an effort to stream P. River against you in my leagues for oh, the hope. He will dominate that week. Of I beating promise. you. All right, it's JJ's turn. He will rain on you. <laughs> oh. Hey, guys, it's your boy JJ Zacharyson here. You know, the guy who on this very show last year told you that Lamar Jackson was going to be the fantasy football MVP. MBD. Regression says I'm going to whiff on this year's pick, though. But I'm going to go with TJ Hawkinson. We know he has the overall profile to be a potential stud of the position. 
but he also fits the mold of a breakout tight end really, really well. I did a study this offseason on spotting breakout tight ends, and what was clear was that breakout tight ends are generally tied to good quarterback play, they're usually very, very athletic, and they're often year two or year three players. There are a lot of late round tight ends to like and target this year, but Hawkinson is my favorite. I don't think anyone should be shocked if he's a top five tight end this year and he emerges as the next early round tight end for 2021 and beyond. All right, bold words, top five TJ Hawkinson upside. He was last year's week one darling. Mm -hmm. Lots of fab spent on TJ Hawkinson after week one's dominating performance. Believe it was two touchdowns against Arizona. If it wasn't two touchdowns, it felt like it because it was a lot of fantasy points. And he disappeared. And he dropped the ball in the end zone multiple times last year, and he's doing it again in camp this year. But the profile fits. The profile, look, you're attached to Matthew Stafford. There aren't a ton of other weapons there outside. You know, it's Galladay, it's Jones, it's Hockley's. Do we have the blinders on due to the rookie disappointment after the free agency signing? I don't have the blinders on. I I can see the pathway. I mean, I, I picked Noah Fant as my breakout uh, candidate this year for a lot of the reasons he just uh, laid out. You know, he's a, a very athletic year two tight end that is was drafted to be a star. So I, I totally see the pathway. Um, I'm choosing to go Fant over Hawkinson. If you go Hawkinson over Fant, that's fine. I liked Hawkinson as a prospect mm -hmm. more than Fant coming out last season. Hawkinson does have the better quarterback play. The only caveat that I would throw in, and really the, the true reason why I am Fant over Hawkinson, is just the ankle, the the injury that apparently he still has not fully healed from. I mean, he's out there. He's playing, so he is quote-unquote healthy, but uh, the reports are saying he's he's still dealing with some of that issue, and I know when that injury happened, there were rumors or worries that it was a much more significant injury, and so now a year later that um, he's still dealing with this, I you know, that's the tiebreaker for me for Fant, but Hawkinson... I hope dominates. He sh he could be a great tight end. All right. We've got one more before we reveal our fantasy football MVPs. Jamie Eisenberg from CBS Sports with his pick. The fantasy MVP for the 2020 season isn't a running back, a wide receiver, not even a quarterback. The fantasy MVP for the 2020 season is Dave Caldwell, Doug Marone, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know what they did for you? They saved you the headache of reaching for Leonard Fournette in maybe the third round, potentially the fourth round, but that headache is gone. You don't have to worry about that anymore. You don't have to sit there and say, look how good he was last year. Look what he could do this year with all this work. We've been telling you, our podcast, Shameless Plug at CBS Sports, this fantastic podcast, The Fantasy Footballers, anybody who's been paying attention has told you, don't draft Leonard Fournette and the Jaguars. They removed that headache for you. So Dave Caldwell, you're the guy. You're the fantasy MVP for the 2020 season. Right before the busiest draft weekend in fantasy, you took away that headache of Leonard Fournette. Bye-bye. Thank you. Dave Caldwell, MVP. Also, Blake Jarwin, it's his time. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he made the case that uh, this is how I feel about the leadership in Cincinnati, by the way. Thank you for making things easier on me with Joe Mixon. But we don't have to deal with Leonard Fournette if, if you haven't drafted yet. But then he throws in Blake Jarwin. Mm-hmm. So yes. he, he believes. Yeah, well, he look, believes. Look, when you're riding on Falcor, mm. there's, there's, is there room for two? There is. There's room for a whole he's town. A, he's a big dog. Yeah. <laughs> is he a dog dragon? What is he exactly? I, think, I don't. I he's, think he's his a dog. own thing. <laughs> he's a dog dragon. <laughs> wait, wait. You dog. said that like a factual statement, well, as though dog dragons. Well, exist. he's got like he's got a dog face. He's right. got. Scales like a dragon and he flies. I I don't know. He's but a yes. Falcor. But but uh, Jamie is one hundred percent correct that Blake Jarwin will be a fantasy MVP this year. Large white dragon. Now real quick, <laughs> uh, the, I'm, wait. What? That's uh, look. The, the Google says it's a large white dragon. So yeah, with a dog face. With a dog face. All right. Um. To I will say this though, Jamie is 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 right in the sense that he's helping. You know, on on taking Leonard Fournette out, he is helping. You know, listeners not make that mistake, but could you argue that that is bad because we weren't going to draft him, which meant someone else was. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. And we don't get the validation of the fact that his season would have come to a screeching halt regardless of whether he was on the team. 
So we, we got the validation already. This is a true victory lap. Okay. It's our turn. Volunteers to go first with fantasy football MVP picks here? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to go first because my pick should not be surprising to anyone who's been following the podcast at all over the summer or since the draft. It's Antonio Gibson running back out of Washington. The rookie, I... Uh, look, you want to have... Are you feeling down in the dumps? You want to bring some joy in your life? Pull up Antonio Gibson highlights on YouTube and see what the potential is. This guy was scoring a touchdown basically every single time he touched the ball at Memphis. Here is the path that Antonio Gibson took. He had to go to JUCO uh, because of grades. There as a running back, he led his team in receiving. He goes to Memphis once he finally gets his shot because he was playing behind two NFL running backs. I don't blame Memphis for not getting him on the field. But as a senior, he was second on the team in receiving at the running back position. I want my running backs to catch the ball. I care more about that than I care about them being a two-down grinder. He's a dominant kick returner. We've seen high correlation with players who have that skill set. Just That means they're a good NFL player. That means get them the ball in space. The senior bowl matters for college. In the senior bowl, he was the leading rusher of the game, 11 for 68 on the ground, That proving that he can get it done on the ground. Washington used their second pick on him. Yeah, it was a third rounder, but it was actually their second pick in the draft. He is one of the few players where the backfield is very murky. Yes, I, I readily admit, I think Adrian Peterson is the starter at the beginning of the season, but this is absolutely a situation where the talent could rise to the top. The best running back, I believe, will be the guy, and I believe that the best player for the team is Antonio Gibson. The, the three-down skill set is there. He's been tearing up training camp. He has been running with the ones people were talking about. Well, is Bryce Love going to be the starter on this team? Bryce Love is running with the twos. There are beat reporters making projections that Bryce Love might be the, the one who gets left off the roster. Look, Antonio Gibson, I know he, the, the draft cost has gone up eighth, ninth round, but that's still in the range of that's take the shot on the guy that you think can win your league. And to me, that is Antonio Gibson. I will say one thing that has encouraged me about the chance of Antonio Gibson making a big impact is the fact the team seems very committed to him as a running back. In camp, there's a lot of talk about the hybrid weapon, wide receiver room, kick returns. From what I understand around camp, he's being treated as a running back. Yes. Primarily. I mean, he's in that room. He's with the running backs day to day, which gives him just a higher chance of being that breakout type of candidate. And uh, my final point here is, okay, let's say... And where you draft him. Yeah, let's say, okay, the, the carries just aren't there. Antonio Gibson, he's around the 100 carry mark, which is, you know, it would be a little bit disappointing, but it is a possibility that Antonio Gibson is already the best second pass catcher on this team behind Terry McLaurin. It's not just the running backs that are nebulous. It's also the wide receiver core. It's just, they have a weapon problem on that team, and Antonio Gibson is a lethal weapon how, on the football field. How dare you? Steven Sims is amazing. Um, no, I, I agree with you, and, and I, you've brought this up before, but I think it's worth repeating. Jonathan Taylor is a freak of nature. That's yes. why he, he's someone else's fantasy MVP this episode. That's why he is, you know, when you're 225-ish pounds and you run sub 4-4, you succeed. Like, right. the history of those guys succeeds. Well, that's Gibson. Gibson is the same exact thing. Uh, ran the, I think they were both yes. 4-3-9, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, if, if he gets the opportunity at running back, he should take advantage of it, is, yep. is the expectation. All right, I'm going to bring you my fantasy football MVP. We'll let Jason close it out. Um, mine is about what makes a fantasy football MVP. And to me, that is having a difference maker at a specific position that you acquire later in the draft. That has been the definition for fantasy football MVP for the past few years specifically for this position. I'm not singing a new song here. It's Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is my pick as the fantasy football MVP. I, When you look at Kyler Murray, I just listened to Daniel Jeremiah talk about Kyler Murray. Like I said, he's a popular breakout pick for a reason. The, pass, uh, the passing ability of Kyler Murray is why he went number one overall. Daniel Jeremiah said if you, look, if you took this draft class, last year's draft class, and the year before, and you put all those quarterbacks available, 
into the pot. That includes Lamar Jackson. Daniel Jeremiah would take Kyler Murray, number one overall, mm -hmm. over Lamar Jackson because of that passing upside. I think he has the best chance of being a weekly difference maker for your fantasy team relative to the draft value. He is entering, gentlemen, the Jordan year. Oh. His year 23 season. <laughs> when Patrick Mahomes. Wait, is this a thing now? It, 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 it's kind of a thing. When Patrick Mahomes entered, it, it was his year 23 season when he made the leap to league MVP, fantasy MVP. He was a 10th round selection that year. Lamar Jackson, year 22, going into that year 23 season, made the leap, league MVP, fantasy MVP, was an eighth round selection. And here's Kyler going from year 22 to year 23. He is a sixth round pick. Now you are starting to, starting to catch on mm -hmm. as to what can happen in fantasy football drafts. But if he's a sixth round draft pick, you already have a hit rate in those rounds that is that is difficult. You're not hitting every pick in that round. Yet the upside of hitting on Kyler Murray is so tremendous. He is the only other, uh, Cam Newton's the only other rookie quarterback to hit that 3,500 passing, 500 rushing yard mark in the history of the NFL. And the real case about Kyler Murray that can be easily made statistically is the touchdown percentage, mm -hmm. that positive regression. Last year, Kyler Murray had a 3.7% touchdown percentage. Last year, Lamar Jackson in the miracle year had a 9% <laughs> touchdown percentage. So you're saying... Percent. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> but what if? Uh, but really... You know, Patrick Mahomes in his super year, it was 8.6. Those are outliers on the other extreme from the 3.7. But let's say he gets to 5, 5.5%, a very reasonable, achievable, mm -hmm. normalized Slightly number. Slightly above average. Yes. That's, that's what that, you know, if you're 5, 5.5, you're above average, but not outlandish, not you, an outlier. You got it. You got it. Gardner last year, 4.5% in his rookie season. Kyler, 3.7. He's going to throw the ball at least 550 times in 2019. They've added DeAndre Hopkins to the offense. Let's say he doesn't make that outlier leap, six, seven, eight percent, but he gets to five and a half. Well, five and a half is 30 touchdowns, 30 to 31 touchdowns in this offense. You add DeAndre Hopkins to the equation. You got 500 yards rushing minimum on the ground over the course of the season. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Kyler Murray, when you look at what he did last year, he did not throw the ball deep a lot in that offense in quantity, but he, when he did throw it deep, he was very, very successful doing so. Seventh most yards on those throws. Do you think DeAndre Hopkins helps you with your average depth of target and yeah, your success? I would say so, yes. Do you think going into a second year of a burner like Andy Isabella, big playability, a healthy Christian Kirk, Dan Arnold, what he brought, two <laughs> touchdowns over the last four weeks. We were going to have to fight if you didn't bring up the postman. The Ex fifth name that you can bring up now is... First ballot Hall of Famer, Larry Fitzgerald, who's looked really good in camp. <laughs> yeah, and Murray's put on some weight. Um, here, here's what I'm saying. If you wait till the sixth round and you draft Kyler Murray, you have an outside shot at the number one overall fantasy quarterback for 2020. Adam, that chance with the predictability of breakouts at the quarterback position, it's worth that pick, and it's worth that pick over anybody else you can get in that sixth round. Um, I, you get the high weekly baseline number with the rushing totals. Uh, I think the NFL Jordan year leap is coming for Kyler. We also saw the year one to year two leap for Carson Wentz. So we've seen this now three times where that guy becomes the fantasy football MVP. Look, if the draft cost goes up to the third, fourth round, sorry, no, get out. But six round value on Kyler Murray, that's my, that's my fantasy MVP. Yeah, I like it. And uh, sometimes I play a game where when you remind me that the Cardinals have DeAndre Hopkins, I try not to smile. I saw you smirking. I, Is that all it was? It was just all, a It was pure... just a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Oh, that's so nice. You know who else brings me warm, fuzzy feelings? Who's that, My Jason? wide receiver one for my League of Record team, A.J. Brown. Ooh. That's my fantasy MVP this year. And the reason why he's my fantasy MVP is because he's going to be a fantasy MVP. He's phenomenal. He's not good. He's He was otherworldly his rookie year. He had the ninth best rookie wide receiver season since the year 2000. Uh, he was dominant. And we left last season worried that he was going to be like this top six wide receiver pick in fantasy this year because of how dominant he was. How dominant was he? Well, once Ryan Tannehill took over, he was the wide receiver three. But from... Their bye week on, there was a major shift in the Titans' offense. Okay, before the bye week, A.J. Brown averaged 59% of snaps. After their bye week, 
he averaged 85% of the snaps. He went from being a wide receiver on the team to being, oh, this is a this is a starting wide receiver on pretty much every passing down. He was the wide receiver one from that, not a wide receiver one. He was ahead of Michael Thomas during that stretch. Now, he had a ton of touchdowns. He had these big breakaway plays, things that are outlierish. But he finished his rookie season as the wide receiver 15. He's currently being drafted as the wide receiver 18. Hmm. He's being drafted past what I believe is his floor. That was his rookie year when he wasn't playing all the snaps. He's coming into camp as the clear number one. Uh, he, he has the potential, the body type, the ability to finish as a wide receiver top five this season, and you're getting him in the fourth round. Look at the names of people who have finished within a point per game of where he finished his rookie year. I'm going to read you these names. Tell me if they're good or bad. Not one by one, just as a whole. Odell oh. Beckham Jr., <laughs> Anquan Bolden, Michael <laughs> Thomas, Mike Evans. Oh, dear. Michael Clayton, Mike Williams, Kelvin Benjamin, Keenan Allen, Marquise Colston, Eddie Royal, A.J. Green, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, and Julio Jones. Now, you got a couple names in there. But yeah, there, Calvin, there's a couple, couple of stuck abs- in there. Couple Absolutely. Stinkers. A couple of those. Uh, Michael you know, Clayton, is that, uh, that's that movie you like, Brooks, right? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, exactly. The Phenomenal Clooney. movie. Uh, Clooney. Clooney. That's George Clooney. But I had no idea. The vast majority of those players are superstars, career-long superstars. And that's what A.J. Brown, I believe, is. I don't see any reason talent-wise. He, you know, he was drafted to be that. He went ahead of D.K. Metcalf, his own teammate from college, in the NFL draft. So, to me, I think he should be a top-10 wide receiver for fantasy. He's being drafted where, so what if he doesn't break? further out uh but i i think he will he's my fantasy mvp for 2020 well i love it and he uh he's one of those players too that you root for to have all the opportunities you saw it last year because you know what he's capable of you want those players to be it's like the let rest cook situation you want to see aj brown mm-hmm. unleashed and they might start doubling him oh Wait, no, they, they're going to need to stack the box. That's right. I forgot. There's Derrick Henry behind there opening things up. So I, I love it. I watched some Derrick Henry highlights yesterday. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't we close segments with the same drop we open them with? Yeah, always. Let's try that. Who's this has your been. fantasy MVP? Antonio Gibson. So, uh, David Blaine's okay? Is that what we, we've established that? Yeah. Uh, look, guys, I, have, I guess okay I have is not the right description. I have something to tell you. I am David oh, Blaine. Oh, no. <laughs> it's been a wild ride. Hope you enjoyed the podcast, enjoyed the show. Make sure you grab the Ultimate Draft Kit if you don't have it already, and Listener League Draft tonight. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Hey, Foot Clan, thanks for listening to that episode. Remember, you can get a Navy Federal Auto Loan and reward yourself with a new car right now. Rates are as low as 1.79% APR. Plus, you can get estimate, uh, you can estimate your monthly payments with their online loan calculator before you apply. At Navy Federal, their members are the mission. Insured by NCUA, credit and collateral subject to approval, rates subject to change, and are based on credit worthiness. Rate available for new vehicles. Message and data rates may apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information.